Hello everyone. In this Keep Talking project update, I'll be covering my final case build. And I have to say, it's looking so much like the game, it's incredible. If you've seen some of the previous videos, or have followed along on the Keep Talking Builders Discord, you'll probably have seen my case before, and maybe you're wondering what's new. Well, in this longer video, I'll be taking you step by step through the whole build process. Alright, let's start with electronics. Amongst the many, many PCB orders I've been placing, the important ones for the case are the small widget connector boards, module backplate connector boards, and the widget controller. The widget controller here is like the main PCB for the modules, with an ESP32 that's used to control the serial number e-ink display and play the game audio. This board needed to be split in two to squeeze it in place in the middle of the bottom of the case. Here I'm also splitting up the widget connector boards as they're made in pairs. The connectors sit under where the widgets will attach to the outer case and provide power to the widgets that have lights or data to the e-ink display of the serial number widget. The white connectors will chain with each other all around the outer case and the black connectors are exposed for the widgets to slot into. As the bottom of the outer case is for the widget controller, the power and the audio, this leaves 14 spots for a widget, and so 14 connector boards were prepared. And after getting those 14 panels ready, it was then time for some wiring. And this was a real task of endurance. Each row of the connectors, as you can see, would need to be chained together, and that meant 14 lengths of wire in total. I bought in wire with a connector already in place on one end, so this just needed to be cut to the correct size, and another connector crimped onto the end. This took a very long time and was very mandrolic, but obviously needed to be done to get everything to fit correctly. After checking that all of the connections ran through the case, I moved on to the widget controller board itself. So I ordered the PCB with most surface mount components already assembled, leaving me to just stack on the audio amp breakout board, the volume knob, the reset button, power switch and the connectors that will go out to the widget connector boards. The other half of the board has another power switch and that toggles the use of a second USB power bank. Now at the time that I designed this, I was not entirely sure of the current draw of 12 modules. So I built this board so it could either run everything from one USB power bank, or optionally run six of the modules from one bank and the other six modules from a second USB power bank. Next, I uploaded the widget controller code that I'd made previously. And as I didn't put a USB interface on the board, I needed to use this little expressive flash board as an interface. And there it goes, no problem. So to give it a better test, I hooked up the e-ink display to the widget board to see if the display would update. And after uploading the code and hitting the reset button on the board, you can see that the display does indeed update. So everything seems to be working so far. Now on to the bottom of the case. So I needed to print out a few more panels for that base, and that would hold the widget controller, some speakers for the audio, and the USB power banks. Now putting the case together is fairly simple, but there were so many steps to this, and it all took so much time. So as you can see by how much I've sped up some of the following clips. For those who haven't seen it before, most of the frame is made out of aluminium extrusion with some 3D printed parts in between to act as the panels. 
the aluminium extrusion is bolted together with some different fastenings uh, and that holds the plates in place. After getting all of the components together, I thought best to give the controller a test on USB power. And so far so good. The final stages of getting the controller board ready was to wire up both halves and add in the connectors that will join up with the module backplates. As this board will act as the hub for all of the other modules to be able to communicate with one another. After getting all of this ready, the board is bolted in place and hooked up to the speakers and the power. However, I'm not going to just show everything going right, as there was a lot of trouble along the way. So after this, I load the inner case on top of the base and found that I hadn't taken into account that the inner case is a little thinner than the outer case. So that volume knob that you can see ended up being placed in the way of where that case should sit. The best solution I could find to this was simply wiring up another potentiometer and gluing it closer to the center of the bomb. Annoying, but not too difficult to fix. And before making too much more progress, I also took the chance here to change the power panel design. So rather than only accessing the power banks from the inside, I made the removable panel that you can access from the outside. And this would obviously make removing and swapping out the power banks much easier after the whole case is put together. And then the final pieces of cable for the widgets were cut and crimped, connecting the widget controller to the widget panels on the outer case. And then time for another test, not just of the widget panels, but also a sound test. This test just looped through a lot of the sounds that the game uses to see how they sounded coming from the speakers. Listen in. Now the final bit of wiring to be done was for the module back plates. And this would allow the modules to connect up to each other when they're slid into the case. The connectors I maybe foolishly picked for this are DB9 serial connectors. And not wanting to wire them up directly, I drew together a few PCB configurations that came on a single board that I could divide up and use where needed. Two of these designs would be used in the module back plates and the last design would be used inside each module as shown. So yet more measuring up lengths of ribbon cable, cutting, soldering and crimping. You can see just how many lengths of cable had to be made and it was a real, real time sink to prepare everything. I originally thought to wire each of the module backplates up to the widget controller board separately, but decided there was little point, so chained two panels together. Now this would make putting the backplates into the case more challenging but they could still be slipped in from the top and rotated into position. The back plates were bolted together around some of the extrusion fastenings, holding them securely in place. And now we get to putting the physical case together, and this turned out to be a huge puzzle. The case is held together with a variety of different fastenings, and the difficulty came in assembling the case in the correct order so that either things would fit past other parts or so that I could reach the fastenings themselves. You see here that I'd split the outer case into an L shape and then tried to attach the last side separately. I did this because if I kept the three panels together in a U shape, they would not have slid around the inner case. Those little widget boards and cables would have snagged and stopped it going in. So I pulled one of the sides off, hoping to tack this on last. However, this meant that I didn't have access to the fastenings on one of the corners due to the panels being in the way. So maybe I can take those panels off, put that last side in, fasten the outer case together again, and slide in the panels and attach the wiring back up. And after many attempts and all of this trouble, the final slide did not line up. There was a big problem somewhere that I hadn't spotted, and it turned out that the inner case was not square so the outer case could not close around it and come together. I built each of the faces of the inner case flat, 
However, attaching the two faces with the many, many short lengths of frame couldn't be done with any sort of guide to keep it square. My solution was to pull off one of the inner faces, build the outer case around this half, and then slot the inner face back in. And this would let me tighten up the entire outer case snugly around the inner frame, keeping it square and tidy with no space to twist or tilt. Still, I had to try many, many times to readjust the assembly order so that I could reach all of the bolts and fastenings without blocking myself in. The scratches you might be able to see on my arm were the result of many fights with the sharp aluminium extrusion as I was pulling it all together. After sliding the outer case over half of the inner case, I had to rewire one of the sides, again because the wiring stopped those sliding into place. I refitted the widget boards to the panels and then could finally fit the last inner face back in place. The outer case was lifted for a brief moment to help that inner case slot back in, again due to the difficult ordering of how everything needed to come together. The numerous fastenings needed for the face were slowly tightened together without having to worry about their alignment this time. Using Allen keys in this tight space was very, very slow work, so I printed a little hex key that I could more easily turn and hold in the tight spaces, and this made it much more bearable. But just to give you an idea of the time taken just to bolt these pieces together, I worked for many hours over the better part of a week, and that was just to get the case together, not including the wiring and preparing the PCBs that you saw earlier. Then I made sure to align the module back plates to the center of the case. And this was done very simply by adding in some of the modules, which should be about the exact size to reach where the plates should sit. Then they just needed to be tightened in place. And lastly, a little detail I've been waiting to do for months. The case is a touch over 10 kilograms, and so not very easy for people to move around and see the widgets or go from solding one side to the opposite. So I wanted to have a case easy to slide around on a table so people didn't have to lift it, which would make it easy for people, but also reduce the risk of it being dropped and suffering damage. So I found some low friction pads that could be stuck to the bottom of the case which would make it easy to spin and slide on a flat surface and people shouldn't be tilting it to look at the bottom since there are no widgets on there. However, I found some long pads that were also perfect in filling in a detail about the design of the bomb in the game that hasn't been shown so far. These little bumps that seem to separate the widgets on the outer case. The pads were the perfect size and shape to also be a decoration, so I covered the entire bomb outer case in these with a few more on the bottom to help support that heavy frame as it's being moved around. And the test? Well, I could push and pull this 10 kilogram case around the desk with just my little finger. These pads are so much lower friction than I was expecting, so a big win there. And we are finally done. If you thought this video was long, well, it was much, much longer to put it all together, um, but I'm glad it has all come together. And now that it's built, I'm not planning on any more changes and I can't foresee having to pull it apart for any reason going forward. 
and next I am preparing all of the modules. I'm hoping to have about two or three copies of most of those modules so the printer is working overtime to get all of those pieces ready. I am also assembling more of the PCBs and getting some more of the wiring ready so these modules can be hooked up and fully functional super quick since all of the coding and prototyping has been done. But that's it for today. Hopefully you'll see some more shorts coming soon as some of these modules get printed, prepared and ready as they can now be shown off inside of the case with everything working together. But I'll see you in the next one. Bye.